Brisbane to Beach four wheel drive hire. Dynamic web projects dot com, dynamic odds dot com, Brisbane Collision Centre, the Motorsport Zone dot com, and uh, the Queensland Motorsport Museum open today and uh, Tuesday to Sundays uh, in the middle of the Ipswich Street Mall. Uh, Ipswich Street Mall. <laughs> the I Ipswich City Mall and not forgetting of course Pacific Home Loans and Finance as the Queensland Touring Car Championship comes out for their final of four races over the course of the weekend. Now, Brett Kennedy has been a class apart amongst the Queensland Touring Cars here this weekend, but Steve Hay has pushed him harder than anyone's pushed him at here at Queensland Raceway for some time. Dan Kuda joining us in commentary for this one. Um, unfortunately, in that instance, because we'd much rather you um, have the race suit on and be down, uh, down amongst the grid, but uh, nonetheless, great to have you up here, Dan. Thanks very much. Jonesy, it's good to be here um, in one way because you get to see the, the racing from a different perspective um, and it's sad not to have the helmet on, but it's good to watch the racing. Yes, the uh, now um, I was actually down on the fence with the camera at the last race, so perhaps you can ask uh, answer me a question. That enormous engine blower, who was that? Chris Brown. Oh, damn. Brownie's, Brownie's had some difficulty uh, this year, actually, with engines, which is surprising because... He, uh, he really knows how to build a good motor. Well, and Jim Spencer's car has been bulletproof for yeah. a while now. Yep. So yep. Yeah, yep. And, uh, so, and so had Chris's prior to this new motor, mm. where his old motor was, uh, was, was bulletproof as well. It was a good motor, and he elected to go for a, for a smaller motor um, to, I suppose, to just bring it back to his driver, driver ability instead of the, uh, the quantum of horsepower. So yeah. this motor, just for whatever reason... Um, yeah, just just hasn't been working for him. But it, not with well, any of that. Yeah. If, if you're not pushing the envelope, though, you're not learning anything. That's right. That's exactly right. I mean, he's, uh, he's preparing a new motor for me as well. Um, we're, yeah. we're doing something slightly different with my car, which is why I'm not on the track. Mm. And if you're going to push it, uh, push the envelope, you do it with your own car rather than when, with the client's car. Yeah, yeah that's <laughs> exactly <laughs> right. That's exactly right. But, but Jimmy Spencer's motor comes out of there as well. Yeah. Um, you see... Steve Burridge's Monaro was actually built, that engine was built um, from the Western Suburbs um, workshop as well. And hasn't that been a bullet today on debut? Yes, yeah, good car. And Gary Horgood's Western Suburbs engine. The leading Class B competitor here this weekend. And uh, so just to cap the, uh, the grid as we start race four, Brent Kennedy in, uh, the black, in, the, uh, in black, black Betty, <laughs> the VT. Just uh, a little bit pedestrian start to the warm-up lap from Brett just then, but that can happen. Uh, Nick, still, Nick Linton has joined the back of the uh, back of the grid as well. Um, Backed unfortunately by Murray Kent, mm. uh, but he's back on track, which is fantastic to see. He missed yet this morning, but he's out today, this afternoon. So yeah. Um, <coughs> <coughs> Pardon me, folks. Just our voice catching up, I think, to too much talking. Hamish Goats there on that second row of the grid being joined by Richard Gresham. And didn't he come through the uh, order a bit in, that, uh, in this morning's race smaller, three? The smaller track really suits Gresham's car. And then you've got Bruce McKenzie, who's um, Brett Bolton, both, uh, both on the next row, which have both BMW cars mode, have just yeah. been, yeah, yeah, been jets. Jimmy Spencer's had some issues with his car handling-wise, actually more so than anything else. He's trying to stop that front wheel from lifting up in the air. Yeah, he's having tremendous difficulty on the sprint circuit with the uh, with the left-hand exit from the yes. dipper. It's just too sharp. Backs up an enormous train of cars behind him, yeah, trying yeah, to get yeah. trying to get out of that left-hander. But but he has plenty of horsepower in a straight line, and this being the the national track, it should suit his car a little bit better. And then you've got the next two cars being Batterham and and Woodcroft. And yeah, Peter Batterham's. Uh, well, the car's had a significant birthday since the last time we saw yeah. it. And how much of an improvement has that car been? That's been a revelation. Yeah, yes, for both of the sprint races today and yesterday. So the car's a bit of a jet, and he did a 20 in qualifying um, around the national. So it's a fast car. And here we come, sort of coming up to turn six, and they seem to be bunching up nice, nicely here, Mark. Yeah, uh, good uh, starting formation there. Murray Kent back there. He's had to come off the rear of grid in the previous race and got up to the fringe of the top ten in doing so, so that was a pretty good charge from Murray, considering the uh, the extended safety car uh, during the safety car period. We're about to start now. Now, Steve Hayes hanging back a little bit at the start here. Trying to slingshot, I think, Mark. 
under great start anyway. Hamish Goats has got a fantastic start from the second row of the grid, and unfortunately, uh, Richard Gresham's been left gasping a little bit, although he's, he is going to hang on to fourth position. It's those top three Holdens have skipped away from the rest to head on to the back straight for the first time. Brett Bolton's E36 might catch Gresham, though, I think, in a straight line, because it's... Uh it's a fast car and a straight line, that, that uh, BMW. And Aero presumably helps an E36. Considerable three, the hairpin at the end of the back straight. Gresham still holding on to that fourth position at the moment, but as you say, under severe threat there from the ex-Formula V racer, Brett Bolton. Oh. Although Bolton in turn is being um, absolutely uh, mat well, no, I was using some... Certainly Steve Burridge has got a Burridge tremendous second half of the lap there and then a black Monaro. Burridge had some suspension issues in the last race where he had a trailing arm uh, loose and he sorted that out between... Now Steve Hayes' car, completely rebuilt since the last time we saw it at the Commodore, that is. It's uh, gone from the Group A look to the Group C look and it's the bigger, fatter tyres that worked wonders for the car's speed and he's right up at the point of Kennedy's quite the sledgehammer in a straight line. Yeah, you, you know, the surprising thing with Brett's car, uh, Jonesy, is that it's, it's actually not that fast in a straight line, but it's got for where he makes it up. And you see him when he goes around turn two there and onto the back straight. He's probably 10 kilometres an hour faster coming onto the straight than what Steve Hay is, and that's where he get, gaps him. Yeah, uh, Brett's car, a fairly basic build for what, the, for what he's been able to achieve with the car. It's, uh, he's uh, learned quite a bit about car building from all those years racing. Hyundai excels where he turned himself into the uh, the benchmark. Since coming through the field, he's uh, climbing all over the back end of Bolton's car, and there's something flapping on the side of uh, Spencer's car. I think that might be his uh, side window there. Yeah. Guys, in a lot of these cars. Mm. And it's just come adrift from the uh, from the rubber lining. So he did some changes. He he, he actually raised the roll centre in the rear on that car. And you yeah. can see when he come around turn five, then it wasn't lifting the wheel like it normally does. Picked the spot off Gresham. That's why he had, was a, had a very tight entry to turn six. We couldn't see Gresham's car out to the side, but you can see there. And here comes Murray Kent now as he's, well. He's coming through the field nicely, isn't he, Murray? That's a very fast car, that Tirana. Yes, he's finally got the car mechanically right, and then he fenced the car at Lakeside. So it's... Um, <laughs> but uh, since then, the car has run very strongly in morning... Oh, sorry, in race two yesterday afternoon which saw him rear of grid this morning. Uh, a nice he's had a really Brett good week. car, isn't it? Mm. Yeah, relatively new car. Is that, yes. is that the Burridge's car from yes. earlier in the time? For a car that's having its first season, and with two completely different drivers, it's been, uh, it's been showing its... Uh, that car's come out of uh, Motorsport Zone, which are the boys, uh, Carl and Chris Begg, um, from, uh, from North... North um, North Cliff, uh, North... Uh, <laughs> I wasn't sure myself. <laughs> Batter looks like he's handing yeah. Spence there. He's got him too. Under brakes into turn six. Good mm. move. Yeah, nicely done. And it's a um, very race. race. Yeah. yeah with, who's, with, got, who's got the poke? Well, this could be line ball. Both, uh, both um, uh, they share the same engine builder, don't they? So it's... Uh, no, they don't. No? Oh, so, who's so the uh, Valvoline car actually comes out of Woody's Fat Ez. Oh, it's a Fat Ez car. About the same sort of horsepower, but yeah. um, and in the end, line ball. It was um, just yeah. the um, it was just that uh, Batterham had the better line Position. with the inside line for turn one. Too that thing's got a lot of power in a straight line, and it looks like he's got him under brakes. No, uh, not quite yet. It's um, <laughs> yeah, they're going to argue this one because Kent's gone in a little too deep, and he'll get the good run down to turn four and the inside line. Although Kent's going to argue it. Kent is arguing the point. Muzz is <laughs> taking the inside line here. We're well, trying to. Yep, and he's got, got him. Oh, there. Yeah, that's um, Jim spent a little bit of sleep there to let him in. No, I think Jim. More on people. Well. Having said that, he did close it on to Brett Kennedy. I think in the last race, <laughs> last round. But anyhow. So yeah, some fabs at the pointy end of the field. Then Gresham's under. Well, Richard Gresham's still hanging on to the pointy end, but Michael Woodcroft's move up to challenge in the second of the LH Tyrannus. Here we go, car. It's Mobsby has uh, looped the uh, Glen Trigger car. Where is that? That's uh, on the. That's halfway down the hangar straight, actually, after turn five. So presumably tank slapper and spat him around into the grass. I've just had a, uh, a look at the timing monitor there, Jonesy, and it, it, it did have Steve Hay completely off the radar, but I think he might have actually got a fight. Um, let's 
I can confirm that for you. Nick Clinton's just gone off between turns one and two. Oh, yep, he, the XC1. He had, brake, he had brake issues last last race, so it may, this may not have been a resolving uh, matter. He may no, have uh, not yeah. got that right. An ongoing issue, shall we say. An ongoing issue, yes. And we've got... Uh, maybe oh, and some Greg Lee Craig now Lee's as well. Out. The the very pretty... Oh, there's smoke coming Six out of the front end five. of the car, so that's not just a... Um, that's not just uh, an excursion. There's something else uh, missed as well there in the BMW 635. Now, the uh, lap record for the class is a lap record pace, but we're certainly nudging up against it. Yes, yeah, it is pretty close. Steve Hayes done a 20.2. So and, yeah. Uh, that's, yeah, that's, that's getting on there. He's fairly quick. So the, yeah, so the lap, uh, lap record could fall in this race if they trim any more time out of the, uh, out of the pointy end of the field. Certainly... Look. Hay and Kennedy are pushing each other at the pointy end. And it's uh, Burridge who's now into third position in the Menard. And, uh, roughly around Ian Solomon's position in the field with uh, two of the uh, white Class B Commodores of uh, Gary Anger and, um, Adam, and Pye. Adam Pye. His uh, burgundy coloured car has turned white in the last few months. And there was also uh, John Phoenix who's been involved in that battle as well and uh, Mobsby early on until he's had this uh, spin in this session. Although Ian, Ian dropped the, away there. There's the shot for the front two guys. Yeah. Steve Hay is um, certainly not letting Brett go. I mean, Brett's got a reasonable margin there, but he's, he hasn't stretched it. Um, and there's, and there's uh, Steve Burridge, Burridge yeah. and there's Hamish Goats. So the four of those guys are all within a second of each other. So yeah, Hamish Goats no longer the best Monaro in the field. No, 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 I think uh, Burridge has taken that role. In the last lap, he, uh, he punched out a 20.7, so he's, um, he's obviously not standing still. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, the, uh, the lap times have gone away slightly, some six laps into this, well, half race distance. They're out into the 22s, although Steve Burridge has uh, done a 21.6. So on track, yeah. Yeah, he's still scorching around, uh, mowing down the gap to Kennedy and Hay. Well, that's an ex uh, V8 Giants car. Um, it was made uh, by um, oh, Gary Leeton oh, and oh, it's yeah. been relived. So that so is the Leeton Monaro. That, ah. is the, that is the Leeton Monaro. So it's I a well sorted out car. It's got uh, Murray yeah. Coote suspension in it and um, uh, you know, a good dry sum 3, uh, three, three uh, 6 litre. So uh, Jim Spence just picking up a spot there. We're going past um, Brett, Bolton. Brett Bolton on the run down the back straight and he's been able to secure it. Oh, Woodcroft no. has stopped. That's a turn one or two. I think that's in the between, entry to turn two. Yeah, it's in between one and two by the look of it, Jonesy. Oh, dear. So that's well, one of the many Peter Brock tribute cars that are uh, here today he's is part a, of the... I think he's got it going again. It looks like he... Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, the car is moving. Yeah, he, he did have... Uh, he had brake issues with that a couple of rounds ago. I'm hoping it hasn't come back to haunt him. So... Uh, yeah, we look back at the front of the field there, and oh, we've uh, ah now um, I was getting some uh, sign language from Wes just before, and clamp it's a down. clamp down, uh, presumably to retrieve Woodcroft's parked Tirana down there because he's not that far off the uh, racetrack there, less than a, a car width. So we've uh, we've completed seven laps now, Jonesy. So we've got five to go after clamp down, by the look of it. Mm, after clamp down, and that's. Uh, that's uh, something that uh, can trip people up from time to time. They clamp down laps don't count towards the race distance. No. So no. if you get a little, uh, shall we say, uh, a little too smart as far as fuel loads go, and we then have a significant safety car. And that has happened. Yeah, and um, before you know it. It happened to me um, a couple of years ago, actually. <laughs> <laughs> I was, I Didn't was mean to bring up bad memories <laughs> or anything. I was coming second, too, which was really bad. <laughs> oh dear, oh dear. Well, if you didn't have number two on the side of the car, it wouldn't have been mm. a problem. You might have been leading. Yeah, that's true. So the order, as we see it now, is Brett Kennedy still in uh, in first place, Steve Hay, Steve Burridge. Uh, then it's Hamish Goats in the Silver Monaro, Peter Batterham in the Valvoline car, Murray Kennedy in the white LX four-door Tirana, and then Jim Spence in the, uh, the Brock Tribute car. Yes, Bolton in the um, E36 BMW, then Gresham in the Retrotech 2002. And Bruce McKenzie's been having a fabulous weekend on a track that's not necessarily BMW friendly compared to Lakeside, but he's certainly been one of the top uh, four BMWs all weekend in the Bob Jane T-Mart's car. So that's a and then when fabulous you effort. Okay, they're going to pull them in and um, we'll have a full restart. 
So uh, we might uh, take the opportunity to um, have a little bit of a break and come back to the racing when we're ready for the restart.